episode four of our unnamed vlog. And yep. I'm calling it a vlog now officially uh, because podcasts, there's no video with podcasts and we have video. So yeah. uh, it's a video we'll get there. blog. We'll get there. Vlog. So here we are. We're continuing on with Sermon on the Mount. Like I said, this is episode four. And this past Sunday, we spoke about law. The law. The law and order. But before we go there, um, do we have any more names that came yeah. in? We do. <laughs> Uh, the first one was the Nick and Nate Happy Hour. I like that my name was first. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably should be N A. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Christian Cud, and they wrote Ontario is probably not rural enough to understand that one. I don't know. I don't, I don't know have that one. Any idea what a cud is? Yeah, and the see meet and follow. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. Keep thanks, sending Patty. them, people. Keep sending them in. Oh shoot! Goodness. Well, um, so Ooh. let's talk about this. So we're, we're continuing on with the idea, all of these are relating to moving from religion to relationship. Yeah, not just like a, it's not the idea that in itself religion's bad. Right. Because like we see in James, James talks about that pure religion is taking care of orphans and widows. It's the idea of moving from what we understand mm -hmm. as religion, like... Um, rituals. Okay. Um, and again, the rituals necessarily are bad. It's just when we start idolizing the rituals. So, like forgiveness, I need to go to a priest in order to be forgiven. That's religion. Um, you know, I have to do another, you know, so many prayers a day, or I have to do my Hail Marys, or I have to take communion so often. Yeah. Like, that's religion. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have to dress a certain way, act a certain way, talk a certain way in order for God to like me. Uh, anything like that is, and, and there's a lot of that that's out there, bad religion. Um, even in our churches, you know, we have to be careful of like, um, well, I have to go to church because, yeah. well, I should, it should be more of a, I get to go to be a part of the church because it's the way we worship God and care for one another. You know, like yeah. there's a difference of looking at things from a religious perspective or a following Jesus perspective. And that's what we're trying to break. Yeah. yeah. So, so you opened up with, um, Maybe for me it felt con controversial. Maybe for you it didn't. But for me, because I'm because of my role at the church, I direct the music, I pick the songs, I, I get to sing the songs and lead the songs. Um, Wondering what the question's going to be. There, there, there's this whole thing right now about mainstream, mainstream Christianity. I don't know what else to call it. Mainstream mm -hmm. music. How people might be enjoying or fearfully might be worshiping the oh, music yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. rather than Jesus itself. And you opened up with a comment that was very similar to that. I don't know. I yeah. didn't quote you word, word, word for word, but you said something along the lines of, if we're not careful, we can become worshipers of the music and the tradition or the idea of church mm -hmm. um, instead of directing our worship towards God. So I was wondering, what made you think of that? Yeah, so it's just, um, I see this all the time, the... Um, you might hear somebody say like, you know, I just didn't get anything out of that today. Mm -hmm. Well, the question is, is what didn't you, what were you trying to get? Okay. Like, were you trying to get that emotional feeling? That high, maybe. That high, yeah. Like, uh, and a lot of times, if, did I not walk away feeling guilty or crying because of how bad of a person I am? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I didn't get that today. Well, okay. Why do you have to have that? Um, so the goal isn't so much like, you know, I didn't, I didn't really enjoy worship today or I didn't enjoy the message today yeah. or that didn't really speak to me. Then I would argue that you're probably disconnected than who God is and your God has become something else. Maybe it's that feeling you get when you go to sure. church or that like they didn't sing that song today. Yeah. And that song would have just, man, that would have gotten me today and they didn't mm -hmm. sing it today. You know, or they didn't sing it the way I wanted them to sing it. You know, that's true. And I, I think, wait a minute, worship isn't about the song. You know, worship isn't about that feeling I get when I sing the songs, yeah. um, or when I hear the word. You know, or hear the message. It's more of a, what am I putting into it? Mm -hmm. You know, worship is that I'm coming before a holy God with brothers and sisters, yes. and saying, "Hey, I'm here to glorify you, God. Hear my words. Um, you deserve them, even if." And I'm there a lot of times, even if like, I just, I, there's no emotional attachment to it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. The point is, is I'm worshiping God. Right. And I think that's uh, when we think about relationship and religion, like that's what we got to be careful with. And so if we're heavy on the grace, 
you know, it's typically where we go to, say, more of a charismatic church or more of a, you know, a very Pentecostal, you know, the worship was just, oh, got me going today. Or the opposite is true. If you go to that, you know, it just needs to be, you know, song sit, song, song sit, you know, message. You better just be right on point for 30 yeah. minutes and I'm out of here. Like that's, you know, like an ultra truth. Sure. And I think we're missing the boat on that one too. Yeah, it's kind of a dangerous side of the spectrum if you're heavy on either side. Yeah. You know, it's like you have to have the yeah. grace, live with in the, the tension. Law. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Live right in there tension. in the middle. Yeah. Um, so we're in Matthew 5, uh, 17 through 20. Mm -hmm. And um, be, because it's only a few verses, I'd, li I'd like to read out the full verse here. Okay. Okay. So um, this is Jesus speaking. Mm -hmm. Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, then you will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's law and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But I warn you, mm -hmm. unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of the religions or the religious law and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Okay, and that's the whole That's pretty heavy too. It's very heavy. It's yeah. very heavy be, be, because God uh, be, because Christ is using words that are um, very definitive and divining words like you will never enter the kingdom of heaven <laughs> or i warn you yeah. i mean these are yeah. these are not light words they're not light words um it's a warning for yeah. sure <laughs> so so you can tell that there's there's authority in jesus's voice when he's speaking this even as we read it but yeah and a lot of times in scripture you see that too like man like he taught with authority yeah well it's because mm -hmm. he is the living word you right know? Like, so, yeah yeah Be because that authority comes from law and he is he is the law yeah he is the law um so this was um in grace and truth. Yes. Um, so, so you asked a big question. Uh, what did Jesus believe about the scriptures? And throughout yeah. the whole message, we got bits and pieces, and we ultimately find our four, our four answers. And the four answers were um, the ent entire Bible points to him, yeah, points right. to Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Number two, scripture is true. Mm -hmm. Number three, scripture can change your life. Yeah. And lastly, number four, uh, scripture can show our motives, which I thought was the most interesting one. Yeah. Um, really, really challenging. So do you want to say anything about those or um, do you want to like break them down like one at a time maybe? Yeah, I mean, uh, number one is really good. The entire Bible points to him. And I yeah. think that's like one of those, um, the Old Testament, like uh -huh. Genesis 3.16 begins oh. like everything is pointing to the coming Messiah yeah. from that moment on. So the entire Old Testament is pointing to the future Messiah. Yeah. The Gospels are um, Messiah lived out and present mm -hmm. here with us. You know, the the Acts is then moving uh, Jesus to the world. Like, it's not just you know one person in Capernaum now, one person mm -hmm. in Jerusalem. Like, it's it's now this through the Holy Spirit. It's presenting the gospel now, Jesus to the world. It is a movement. That's right. And yeah. then the letters are pointing to. Um, fulfilling the letter or fulfilling Christ in our lives with one another mm -hmm. and ultimately revelation is he's coming back. Yeah. So everything in the entire if you read the Bible and without ever thinking of Jesus then you're reading it wrong because everything should always be pointing to him. Yeah. Yeah. He's the hero of the book. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And and um there's there's there, there's tons of old passages in scripture um that the, that video that you saw, which um, if if you guys missed the sermon, there is an awesome. It's like a four or five minute video yeah, yeah. that really breaks down like um, some 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 challenging questions that people have about a lot of the old laws because there's like over six hundred laws. Yeah, six hundred thirteen. Six hundred thirteen laws in the Old Testament, and some of them are weird to us. You know, some of them seem out of place. Some of them seem confusing, <laughs> yeah. and they bring up these questions yeah, like do. like wearing uh, uh, linens of a or cloth of two different linens or yeah. something like yeah, that. Right, right, right. And then, and then the whole day, I, idea. People have trouble with the idea of sacrifices and, and, and slavery, and slavery, yep. and, and, and and more and more and more. The list goes on. And mm -hmm. this video, I thought, was was actually really, really. It's cool. really good. I mean, it's, it's by the by. Uh, they're called the Bible Project, and uh, and the video is simply the law. Just type YouTube, type Bible Project, the law, and that video is on there. It's also nice. through our 
message too. But mm -hmm. um, that video, though, is an incredible way to understanding all 613 laws, but how they are all fulfilled yeah. in the life of Jesus. Yeah. Down to two. <laughs> Down to two. Down to two. Really quick, too, I want to say that um, as you're on YouTube looking for things like the Bible Project or that particular video, um, Avenue Church has a YouTube, and that's where that's right. we post these things. But um, a lot of people, I feel like, don't know yet that when they miss a sermon, the sermon goes yeah. right onto YouTube. So you don't get the worship experience with it, but it cuts right to yeah. um, the sermon series um, yep. and anything that we play during the message, like the sermon bumper or videos like The Law. Um, those are all can be found on our on our YouTube as well, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, Subscribe to it, and then yep. you'll get an email or something letting mm -hmm. you know, hey, we posted a new video. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we talked about the laws, um, and even this goes back to um, Jesus spoke about those laws on his time on earth. So like a lot of people think like, okay, well, there's the Old Testament and New Testament. As soon as Je Jesus came, pretty much forget everything in the Old Testament. But that's not, that's not exactly right. You don't want to forget that stuff. That's right. The point... Yeah, the point is, is that he came to fulfill what the prophets um, beforehand, beforehand prophesied. Uh -huh. And so it's nice to know what did they prophesy and really what was going on in order to get to Jesus and himself. So he didn't really just say, I come to you just like, sorry, you're done. But it's more or less to say the whole point, well, that um, William Barclay, mm -hmm. again, who I shared with you, I like what he said. Men had to learn the difference between right and wrong. Yeah. Uh, learn their own human inability to cope with the demands of the law and to respond to the commands of God. Men had to learn a sense of sin and unworthiness and inadequacy. And so that's why we read the Old Testament, because the Old Testament shows our humanity. Um, it shows that we are broken. Mm -hmm. Even God's people, and, and really it's the family, it's, the, it's just the family that God chose to bring the Messiah through. Okay. Why this family? Not sure, but he decided to bring the Messiah through yeah. this family. And who are we to argue? <laughs> right? And so this family known as Israel, because it starts with Abraham, Abraham yeah. two sons, Isaac and, uh, or Ishmael and Isaac, and it came through Isaac. Isaac had another son named Jacob. Jacob's name was renamed to Israel, and then that's where the birth of Israel came out of. So, like, but again, that's a family. So, yeah. the nation of Israel is a family. And through that family, time and time again, through judges and um, through the story of King David and multiple stories in there, then the prophets and all that, we just see time and time again that they got it, they were living it, then there was peace. And because there's peace, they forget, yeah. and then they get themselves in trouble. Yeah. And then God's like, that's punishment, re redeems them again. You know, this happens multiple times in the book of Judges, and then, of course, history repeats itself. <laughs> so messy. <laughs> so messy. So, um, but again, it shows us our need for a Savior. That's the whole point of the Old Testament. Right. Something that I thought was um, really helped me kind of put things into perspective was, was, again, still in that law movie, or a little short movie, and um, mm -hmm. they said it like this. Um, some laws, and these are some of the kind of the ones that we don't understand, really, the really wonky ones of the 600 and so many. Um, some laws kept Israel distinctly different or holy right. um, from other nations. Yeah. So Which would make sense for us to say, yeah. Right. So, yeah. so that's why they would have such strange laws, <laughs> yeah. you know, because they, they, they wanted to stand out. That's right. You, you, On purpose. You know, yeah. Intentionally. And so, some, so even some of the more strange laws at the time... Um, they all were connected in a way that follows the narrative of God bringing order out of chaos, um, just as he did during the events of the creation. And then they had a whole little um, script about the number seven and why yeah. seven is... Um, Complete. Yeah. Um, and I love the beauty of... Um, because, again, slavery is not something that God created or ordained. Mm -hmm. It's just the fall of man yeah. and uh, the sin of man. And, and a lot of times slavery... Again, when we think of slavery, we're thinking of, you know, 17th, 18th century slavery in the yeah. United States, uh, Western Europe, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but really, slavery in ancient times were because you owed a debt. Right. And so you were a piece of property until you could pay that debt off, and then you became free. But a lot of times, you know, again, sin and greed, uh, people can do that. And that's why God said, okay, and we're going to institute... Your jubilee, yeah, you know, year seven, you're all done, you know, mm -hmm. like year seven is you're free, yeah. your sins are forgiven, and yeah. your debt's paid, yeah, 
until you make dumb decisions again. <laughs> so, like, that's the point. All right. So, um, let's go forward a little bit. Um, I, I I have a couple notes here, and these were just kind of thoughts as I was watching your sermon. Yeah. Um, so, here's an open thought here. Uh, Jesus represented the divine ideals behind the laws, uh, which is why he caused such a stir among Pharisees at the time. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because he would do things that they thought were sacrilegious, like healing on the Sabbath, right? stuff like that. Yeah. So even though he's there to fulfill the law, they're in their earthly minds, or maybe them stuck in their really traditional, like, religious yeah. ways. I'd say legalism. Oh, legalism, yeah. yeah. And they were just, like, absolutely, like, I mean, the, they, they we, we know, grew to hate Jesus because of those things. Yeah. Yeah, I, and that's really important, too. Again, that's the problem with religion, is religion, we don't see the people. Mm -hmm. We see the objective, and then, and a lot of times the objective is is I I just want to go to heaven. Well, if you're following Jesus, our objective is not trying to get to heaven. Our our objective is to try to be like Christ to the world, right. and so and because of that, then great is your reward. Right. But then others will going to be like, well, and the, Jesus kind of says this, you know, when did we see you hungry and not feed you thirsty and not give you something to drink? Yeah. It's because you didn't. Yeah. You know, it's like, because your goal was like, I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm just trying to do my thing, I go to church, I'd be mm -hmm. nice, I give money, yeah. you know, um, whatever that is. I don't cuss, you know, at least I don't cuss around the pastor, or, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I don't cuss in church or something like yeah. that, you know, and then we're going to stand before Jesus and he's going to be like, away from me, you evil doer, I never knew you. Yeah. And so many of us are going to be like, what? But I did everything you said. But we really didn't, you know, but that's the idea of... The Pharisees of the day, the reason they didn't do anything on what they would call Shabbat or Sun or the Sabbath, which is Saturday, yeah. if you didn't know that, um, is because they were doing it out of uh, what they thought was to glorify God, and they forgot about all the people that they were serving, right? And that they were supposed to help and walk with. Yeah. Jesus comes along, and that's why the poor and the hurting and the hungry and women and children were so attracted to him. Because he was the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. He was, they've forgotten that the point of a relationship with God is to love people. Yeah. And to love him. But mm -hmm. for them, it just became about trying to obey the rules. Yeah. And it's not, it's not about that. And a lot of those are rules that, 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 that maybe were misinterpreted or yeah. had like an earthly sort of sinful twist right. to them. Yeah, and Jesus would always call it out, right? Yeah, and always call it out. Yeah, I, I love one of the stories is like, if your donkey or a child fell in and something and got hurt, would you not save it? Right, on the Sabbath. On the Sabbath? Yeah. Well, of course you would. <laughs> well, then you'd be quote unquote working. Exactly. And so Jesus is like, yeah, these are dumb. You're, you're missing it. You you're know? missing it. You're missing it. You're not understanding the uh, Sabbath. And even then, too, as, as hard as you can try to do, um, following all 613 of those laws <laughs> yeah. would, would be borderline impossible. I yeah. think it's safe to say that. Yeah. You, yeah. Know? Well, you couldn't do it. Actually, there are certain laws that we could no longer do, period. Uh -huh. So that's why Jesus says, "No, the law was is no longer our savior. Right? You know, Jesus is our savior." And um, and Paul gets into that really heavy in like Romans and mm -hmm. uh, Corinthians and things like that. So um, he wants to make sure that the Jews understand there's there's laws in the Old Testament that we literally can no longer follow because they, it can it won't it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the Ten Commandments. There's, I mean, it's God's wisdom in the yeah. world. And so helping us to understand, of course, we shouldn't, we should all honor our parents and obey our parents. We should, um, even in disagreements, it's not that we are putting you down or making them feel bad. It's just that we honor them, yeah. and even in our disagreements, but we move on. Sure. You know, we're I'm married, I have children, this is my priority now. Yeah. Um, but the first four are always about honoring God, keeping Him as the priority. He mm -hmm. is above all things. Yeah. Um, idolizing things like that. So, I mean, the Ten of Commandments are still important for us today. Oh, for sure. But in fact, I would argue that even if you're not a Christian or, or call yourself a Christian, you probably don't have too many problems with any of the Ten Commandments. Yeah. You know, except for maybe maybe the first maybe, maybe the first love one. Love the Lord your God. Yeah. yeah. So if you don't believe in God, then yeah, yeah you'd have a problem with that. But yeah. the other nine, I think most people, I mean, that's that's just like a morality yeah. sort, of, sort of a thing. You yeah. Know? Um, so, uh, you had a really cool slide, um, you had a really cool slide with some statistics on it. Okay. Uh, okay. And, yeah. and, um, I've grown to really like 
that kind of stuff thrown, yeah, thrown sure, in. Sure. And um, one of the one of the biggest ones, um, or the most impactful statistic for me, um, we actually talked about it before we started our podcast, was um, that that most parents, okay, most parents are totally cool, are totally fine, and probably even <laughs> would yeah. say that they want their kids to be taught all these Christian teachings in school. Yeah. But that's kind of it. Like yeah. that's where it stops. Like yeah. when they come home, then they don't then they don't teach them that stuff again, or yeah. they don't teach it themselves. Yeah. Um, Which and I also yeah. find really fascinating too as um, like how many parents mm-hmm. and this is you. I'm not I'm not putting you down. I just but it is interesting to me that will send their kids to church. Yeah. And think, well, because I had maybe a good experience as a child in church, sure. but I'm, you know, I don't believe in that stuff anymore. Mm-hmm. So why do you think church is important then for your kid? If And that I'm like, I'm trying to understand, unless you're just like, well, they, they teach good morality yeah. and how to be a good person. Or they, or they just assume it's a safe place and their kids are going to be yeah. caught up in drugs and alcohol and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, maybe that, that's why. Mm-hmm. But I would say ultimately, parent, no matter what we can do, um, no matter what we teach your child, you're still the greatest influencer of their life. Mm-hmm. So although you're sending them to church or you're coming to church because of them, yeah. that if you're not influencing towards what we're teaching and living out, they're ultimately going to become like what yeah. they see in you. So, and I think a lot of parents struggle with that. Like, well, oh, sure. Well, yeah. uh, you know, like, well, I think I'm a good person. And, mm-hmm. But if you were to ask other people about you, maybe they wouldn't have that same opinion. We'll see that. See, opinions are dangerous things because that's everyone right. got one. <laughs> Everybody's got an opinion. And so and that's why the idea of following Jesus isn't about, it's not about being good. Right, right. It's, it, it's, it's like, um, you, you, you have to think of it like this. We were talking in our, um, our Hero Maker group. Oh, yeah. And um, we were going through, we're, we're reading through Luke right, 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 right now, excuse me. And um, we, we got to a part in scripture where we were talking about, um, uh, what was it? It was marriage after, or like what happens to our marriages oh, and yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, after death, right. when we're in heaven, are we still married or right. not? Yeah. Yes, and then that and that kind of relates to, well, towards children too. Like our children, God God has given us those children on down here on earth uh, to be our earthly children, Yeah. right? But in heaven, we're, we're all, brothers and sisters. We're all God's <laughs> children. So yeah. like your kids aren't your kids in heaven. Yeah. You, know? you yeah. might recognize them, but you guys are all brothers yeah. and sisters because... God is the only Father, God's the only and father. we are all the children. So it's 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 it, it, it's kind of weird to think about. It, it is very it very weird. With your mind. It's very very weird, <laughs> but it puts it into a perspective of thinking like, well, if I'm in charge of those people right now on Earth, then how am I going to be judged if I failed them on that day of judgment? If like if maybe I've lived in such a way that I have unknowingly, or maybe not even intentionally, kept my kids from Christ. That's right. Just from my own lifestyle, life choices, whatever. Yeah. And Jesus makes it very clear, actually quite frightening, that if we keep children from coming to him, including our own. Yeah. And like I don't know what parent watches this. Um, I don't know if you're somebody watching this right now, or you're sharing this, but if you're somebody watching this right now who doesn't join us on Sunday mornings or any church, yeah. Um, Jesus makes it abundantly clear how dangerous it is for people to keep children from coming to him. Actually, I think he said something like it's it's better that they have a millstone tied around their neck and dropped into the sea. Yes. And I'm just like, that picture alone as a parent should scare me if I'm keeping my kids from him. Mm Mm-hmm. And, but I don't, I think so many people are like, oh, you know, I don't believe in that stuff. But I'm like, you don't realize what's coming then. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's because the resurrection. Yeah. It's everything boils down to Jesus rise or mm-hmm. not. And, yeah. and we believe because he rose from the dead, the reason we have the Bible, the reason we have mm-hmm. gospels, because they all saw him. Yeah. Then obviously his words have a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. And so that's why, man, for me, the more that we can put in the parents' hands, Mm-hmm. To raise their children up in faith, the better and yeah. less. Not so much that we put in our hands, but we want to do things with excellence. Mm-hmm. But we still believe that mom and dad are the greatest um, influencer of a kid's life. And nobody else should be doing it. Like nobody else yeah. should be influencing our kids like our parents should be, yeah. including us. 
So let's talk more about um, more reasons why um, what what do we believe that Jesus believed about the scriptures? Sure. Your four points. Um, there was an awesome quote, um, St. Augustine. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was hoping we are going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so if you have it pulled up, I didn't I write it down. I do. He said, if you believe that you li- if you believe what you like in the Gospels and reject what you don't like, mm-hmm. it is not the Gospel you believe, but yourself. <sighs> Isn't that good? It's like... <laughs> I mean, that, that that's kind of like a mic drop sort of a yeah, quote. Yeah, it kind of is. This is why... This is what saddens me about Christianity, about how many people have come to the conclusion to believe what they want to believe and disregard other things. Like This is for me like why I struggle with like the prosperity gospel out there and how many people watch the prosperity gospel stuff yeah. and pastors. And they're like, oh, but you know, God says this because my pastor said this. And I'm like, but do you read the gospel on your own? Because Jesus also makes very clear how much... We are to be generous and to give away and to mm-hmm. uh, to sacrifice, to take up our cross. State. Do you ignore all of that? You know, like, and so, um, and denominations, how are formed because of this idea. Uh, again, I'm not putting down denominations, but it's more like how messy we as Christians can be yeah. because we pick and choose certain verses out of the Bible yeah. and, and we're like, we just kind of run with it and we miss the context. Like, uh, just a great example, like First Corinthians 13 is always read at weddings, mm-hmm. you know, love is patient, love, love is, is kind, kind yeah. you know, love does not envy or boast, you know, and so um, the problem with that, and again, I'm not against those being read at the weddings because I do it, um, it's a beautiful picture of what love is all about and what we're to do in our marriage, but it's not, in the context of the scripture, it's in between spiritual gifts and um, and if we're not living out the spiritual gifts. So if we're just doing our spiritual gifts just to, you know, whatever, for our own glory or whatever, yeah. then we're just, as Paul says, we're just a noisy symbol, a clanging, a clanging symbol, a noisy gong. Yeah. And But it's in the concept of here's what love is, but love is more important than a spiritual gift. Hmm. But, but we can pull things out of context and say, yeah. well, here's what love's all about. Sure. Yes, it's true. But in the confines of what he was talking about, he's talking about spiritual gifts. So um, it's like puzzle piece Christianity. Yes, <laughs> yes, and, and so like you have the prosperity gospel out there. You have progressive Christianity now. That's just you know that God loves us all. Well, well He does, but He also calls us filthy rags. Mm. That our righteousness will never be uh, considered righteousness for Him. We're just but filthy rags. But Christ made us clean. Right. You know, so like. We can just take so many things out of context and pull things out. We're like, oh, I really like that, but I don't like that. You know, mm-hmm. like I can like this over here about how we do relationships, but don't tell me this relationship over here is bad because this uh, this makes me feel good. Yeah, and it's like, well, sorry. You know, this is what Jesus said. A lot of times, sin does make us feel good it for does. that short moment. It does, and, so, and that's why I like this quote because. It's not the gospel that you believe, but yourself. Yeah. So you put yourself in the seat of Jesus at that point when we pick and choose what we want to believe out of the gospels mm-hmm. or the Bible in and of itself yeah. and how and what we live and things like that. Yeah, you're, you're just making up your own faith. That's you know, right. Or, or you are your own yeah. God. And, and you, I would even argue too that you, you have created a Jesus yeah. that fits in your box. Yeah. So it's like, you may say you believe in Jesus and you believe in the resurrection, but is it the Jesus of the Bible or is it the Jesus you've kind of created? Because if it's a Jesus that you've created in that little box, anything outside of the box, all of a sudden that that made up Jesus has no control over, well, now God right. is no longer omnipowerful. Yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah. Wow. Kind of like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I know you just did a sermon on that, but that is yeah. a sermon in itself. Yeah, it really is as, a sermon As itself. they say. It is. It really is. <laughs> Um, so, um, I, uh, there was another thing here, another, another thought, um, this, this was a kind of like a culmination of parts like three and four, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, talking about our, go together. our motives and, and how the scripture can change your life. And it's like, Jesus brings up these scriptures in, in, in his teachings and throughout conversation during his entire life. Yeah. Okay. As soon as his ministry started. Yeah. Um, and he brings these up and when he's bringing them up, he's defending them. Okay. Mm-hmm. And when he's defending them, it's because he believes that they're true. And if he believes that they are true, then guess what? Transitive property continues. Yeah. It means it's true. It means it's true. You know? And so unless you can prove, and you said this, unless you can prove the resurrection didn't happen, then everything that Jesus said is true. 
That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. That was another um, kind of a moment where it's just like the whole idea, one thought, if you can't prove the resurrection, didn't it happen? Then what Jesus said is true. Right. Yeah, and like we, I think I mentioned this in the message too, but we even talked about this in our group a little bit, but... You know, there's stories in the Bible that we struggle with. You mm-hmm. know, maybe someone's like, oh, that's, just, that's just a nice kid's story. Yeah. Um, and I get it, you know, because it, it could be a nice kid's story, you know. Mm-hmm. Our kids love those stories. Mm-hmm. But they happen. Yeah. You know, like, I think the biggest one that many people struggle with is, did God really flood the entire world? Did he really destroy people? Mm-hmm. Well, according to Luke, yeah, he did because Jesus talked about it. Yeah. And, Jesus talked about Noah and the flood. Jesus talked about Jonah and the whale. And Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, all those. The Tower of Babel. You know, that's where we get Babylon, the nation mm-hmm. of Babylon. And that's still predominantly real today. Um, uh, those are all not just wonderful stories in the Old Testament that somebody made up. I mean, yeah. Jesus is kind of like, nope, they happen. You know? And so, and I'm fulfilling that because and my resurrection proves that they happen. And mm-hmm. I think if we understood that perspective, it would yeah. change a lot of how we look at the scripture. Mm-hmm. I don't know though if it would change how we look at our lives. I would hope so, but like Jesus tells a story of um, the rich man and Lazarus, and it's not the same Lazarus as like rising from the dead Lazarus. Yeah. Just another a guy who was really poor, and and Lazarus was taken to heaven or paradise, or Eden, yeah. and then and then. Um, uh, the rich man was in hell, and he's like, I like kind of like, oh man, this actually is true. Mm-hmm. He's like, can I at least go tell my brothers? Yeah, can I warn yeah, them? Yeah, can I, can warn I them? tell them, hey guys, this is, this is legit. This is for real. And he says, and he says, uh, the teachings of Moses and others. Yeah, let them follow the teachings of Moses. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And and uh, he's like, but no, I need to go tell them. And then he's like. They, they won't even believe you, you know, rising yeah. from the dead to go tell them mm-hmm. if they don't even believe in the teachings of Moses. Yeah. So you're just like, man. So this is it. You got to either put your faith in the resurrection of Jesus or you don't. Like, yeah. it's not a get out of hell free card. It's a, I'm either all in yeah. or not. Yeah. Like, it's not a, can I play both? <laughs> you know? Well, see, I think people try and play both and then... That's how we get all this confusion going on, and yeah. that's how you get this puzzle piece things that people pick and choose. And That's right. And that's why the scriptures, the more we read it, it really does yeah. show our motives. Mm-hmm. It can absolutely change every area of life, and I'm a walking proof of that. You're a walking proof of that. But it also shows our motives, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, we can't fake it till we make it. Sure. Like, it, it's pretty clear. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're gonna if you're going to fake it, then we can see right through it. We're going right. to see... Oh, you're just doing it for show. Yeah. I mean, it's it makes it so so crystal clear that somebody who fakes it, you can tell, right? Um, because then there's fruit, and we did a whole series sure. on the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. So, yeah, and, it's fascinating. And and the idea of faking it too, um, throughout your walk with Christ, okay, you surrender your life, you get baptized, you make that public declaration, right? You screw up. You have that grace of Christ, you know. Yeah, that's right. But that doesn't mean you have a free card. No, sort of a thing. Like the woman at the well, John four. He he kind of reveals all of her sin, and right. we're going to talk about this in two weeks. And it's so beautiful, though, um, because he reveals all of her mess and her dirt and her junk in her life. Um, and then he tells her, though, um, go and sin no more. Yeah. Because he loved her, he showed her all of her mess, loved her, yeah. and said. You are the reason, and people like you, in a sense, are the reason I came. Yeah. But stop doing that. Mm-hmm. Because it's just, in a sense, the reason he's telling us to go and sin no more is because sin is killing us. Mm-hmm. And the, the less that we want to sin and be like Christ, the more we live in freedom and yeah. fullness of God. And that's where we really win. Yeah. All right, so those were my notes on this. I wanted to open it up if you had any sort of a closing thing, if there was anything in the way that you described something that, that, that maybe you wanted to catch up on or like any closing thoughts that you had. And then also, like we usually do, um, a little sneak peek of next week's message. Yeah. Um, yeah. I Mike think is yours. It'll be fun. I um, And I don't know if I said this clear enough on Sundays I wanted to, but... Everything about the Bible and how everything is pointing to him is really based on those two ideas, to love God and to love others. Yeah. And, 
And until we understand that concept, I don't think that we'll ever fully grasp what it is to have a relationship with God the Father, God the yeah. Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Because yeah. just because I don't agree with you doesn't mean I can't love you. Mm-hmm. And I, in our culture, we're saying, well, no, you can't. But, but the love means dying to self, right? It means okay. that, uh, that agape type of love that's unconditional. So that even if, even if you kill me, I will still give my life for you. Wow. Even if I couldn't ag- disagree with you more on every detail of your life, I'll still give my life for you. And that's what Jesus did. And that's, in a sense, what we're supposed to do. So the whole reason of the Bible is to get us to a point where we are giving our entire life, everything that we do, our money, our relationships, um, our careers, Mm -hmm. our parenting, whatever else I'm missing. Every detail is supposed to love the Lord your God and and then through that love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. You can't love God without loving your neighbor and you can't love your neighbor without loving God. They are, yeah. inter- they are, you can't in- separate them. And so that was the whole point of the law that Jesus fulfilled and has moved on mm-hmm. into the future. And um, I hope that's what people get. That's what I hope what most of us got from Sunday is um, everything about the Bible is about Jesus, about loving our God, loving our neighbor, yeah. and allowing it to change our world. So, And that he is truth that he is truth he is absolutely true and he's 100 percent truth and he's 100 percent grace like you can't like he is the full embodiment of both it's not half and half it's right. you know it's you can't have grace without truth and you can't have truth without grace yeah yeah yep. so this upcoming sunday is mother's day so happy Mother's yes. Day to all your moms that may be watching, or women in general. And hopefully we can get some of them to do this. That would be really cool. So yeah. I actually, I don't have a plan for next week because Liz is doing the message. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I don't know, maybe next week Liz will be the guest on yeah. this. I that would be no, fun. I have no idea. Getting on. these women on here, and <laughs> going at it. Um, and then in two weeks, we're going to pick back up the Sermon on the Mount. We're pushing pause this week. Yeah. Um, but again, I said it well, this past, past Sunday it's going to be great to come and learn. Um, it's not PG. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. bring your kids to Avenue Kids. It's an incredible ministry. Um, but Jesus says pretty difficult things. <laughs> yeah, so that's May 16th. That's May 16th, it's May 16th yep. for the adults. <laughs> yeah, so two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for tuning into our vlog. Uh, I'm Nick. He's Nate. And we'll see you next time. And this is the Nick and Nate Show. (laughs)